today we are going to solve a 1D transient heat conduction problem with heat flux boundary conditions also known, known as Newman boundary conditions in Cartesian coordinates using FTCS that is forward time centered space finite difference method. Our objectives are to present a simple 1D transient heat conduction problem. We have Newman boundary conditions that is constant heat flux at the boundaries. We will discretize the domain into say five grid spacings. We'll consider two time steps and solve the problem using FTCS or forward time centered space finite difference method. We'll vary the grid spacings and time steps and resolve the problem and obtain solutions. Our problem is presented here. We have a 1D transient heat conduction problem. We have a long copper bar, say 0.1 meter long. One end of the bar has a heat flux of 38,600. This heat flux is going out of the bar. Likewise, at the other end, we have a heat flux of 38,600 watts per meter square going out of the bar at end B. The initial temperature of the bar is 100 degrees Celsius. Alpha, which is a property of the material called thermal diffusivity, is 1 E to the negative 4 meter square per second. And K is the thermal conductivity of the material, is 386 watts per meter Kelvin. Our coordinate direction is shown in the sketch below. So the general heat conduction equation in 3D Cartesian coordinates is given as dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus dou square t by dou z square plus g over k equals 1 over alpha dou t over dou t. Here the uppercase t represents the temperature and is a function of the three spatial coordinates x, y, z and time t. Alpha is the property of the material called thermal diffusivity and is given in meter square per second. Alpha equals K over rho C. Here K is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter Kelvin. Rho is the density of the material in kilograms per meter cube and C is the specific heat of the material in joules per kilogram Kelvin. And G is the volumetric rate of internal heat generation given in watts per meter cube. We assume that the material thermal conductivity is isotropic and homogeneous. Accordingly, K is uniform in the domain. For 1D transient heat conduction with no heat generation, equation 1 reduces to a simple form. We assume that the temperature does not vary along the y and z directions when compared with x directions. In other words, we insulate the bar except at the ends and there is no heat generation so g equals 0. So accordingly we get dou square t over dou x square equals 1 over alpha times dou t over dou t. This equation is rearranged as shown here. dou t over dou t equals alpha times dou square t over dou x square. Our initial condition t at x comma t equals 0 equals tn. The boundary conditions are at x equals 0, the heat flux Fa at NDA equals negative 38,600 watts per meter square and at x equals L, the heat flux Fb equals 38,600 watt per meter square at t is greater than 0. To obtain the temperature distribution in the rod, we need to solve the above PDE. We will utilize finite difference method to solve this PDE. So in order to do this, we need to replace the partial derivatives with finite difference approximations. We'll replace the time derivative with first order forward difference and the space derivative with centered difference approximations. Accordingly, we get TIN plus one Oh, minus T i n over delta t equals alpha times 
ti minus 1 n minus 2 times t i n plus t i plus 1 n over delta x square. We rearrange the above equation and we get t i n plus 1 equals t i n plus alpha delta t over delta x square times t i minus 1 n minus 2 times t i n plus t i plus 1 n. So let d equals alpha times delta t over delta x square where d is the diffusion number. We then get t i n plus 1 equals t i n plus d times t i minus 1 n minus 2 times t i n plus t i plus 1 n. Equation 5 is the final difference approximation of the original PDE that we are trying to solve. Here i represents the node loca location on the discretized domain. The final difference tensile is given below. The above approximation is called FTCS or forward time center space method. This is an explicit method. Hence temperatures Ti's at future times n plus 1 can be directly obtained based on Ti's at present times as shown in equation 5. All explicit methods are conditionally stable. The stability criteria for the 1D problem is given as d should be lesser than or equal to 0 0.5. Also, to achieve higher ac accuracy, we need to keep delta t small and accordingly the diffusion number small as well. The error in this method is of the order of delta t plus the order of delta x square. Now let us discretize this only domain into c nx or phi segments or grid spacings equally spaced as shown below. Here we don't do not know the temperatures at the boundaries. That is the temperatures at node 1 and node 6 are not known. But we do know the heat flux at the boundary nodes 1 and 6. We added hypothetical end nodes 0 and 7 as we are dealing with the heat flux at the boundaries. According to Fourier's law of heat conduction for one dimension, Qx equals minus k times dt over dx, where Qx is the heat flux in watts per meter square, k is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter kelvin. Rearranging the above equation, we get dt over dx equals minus Qx over k. Here dt over dx is called the thermal gradient and is given in kelvins per meter. Let us apply the constant heat flux boundary conditions at node A. Accordingly we get dt over dx at x equals A equals minus qx over k equals minus Fa by k kelvins per meter. Let us now approximate the first order space derivative using center difference approximation. We then get ti plus 1 minus ti minus 1 over 2 delta x at x equals a equals negative fa over k. At x equals k, i equals 1. So accordingly we get t2 minus t0 over t2 t, uh, over 2 delta x equals minus Fa by k. Rearranging we get T2 minus T0 equals minus 2 delta x times Fa by k and T2 equals sorry T0 equals T2 plus 2 times delta x times Fa by k. So likewise applying the boundary conditions at the node x equals b, we get t7 equals t5 minus 2 times delta x times fb by k. To apply equation 5, we need to consider the, no, in, uh, the nodes 1 to 6. Let's apply the equation 
for all these nodes and we get the set of equations algebraic equations as shown here here t i 0 is the initial condition for all nodes and we will now substitute the boundary conditions which you derived earlier into the above set of equations accordingly we get t 1 1 equals t 1 0 plus d times t 2 0 plus 2 times delta x minus f a over k minus 2 times t 1 0 plus t 2 0 and t 2 1 equals t 2 0 plus d times t 1 0 minus 2 times t 2 0 plus t 3 0 and so on rearranging we get the set of equations as shown here let's take a small uh, time step delta t equals 0 0.1 seconds and delta x equals l over m that is 0 0.1 over the number of grid spaces phi which is equal to 0 0.02 meter and the diffusion number d equals alpha times delta t by delta x square and is obtained as 0 0.025 which is lesser than or equal to 0 0.5 so we have met the stability criteria substitute let's substitute the values of d and initial conditions into the above equations we'll get we can solve for the temperatures at the various nodes at the boundary nodes as well as at the interior nodes so for the first time step this is our temperature distribution in the copper rod at the boundary nodes the temperatures are 99.9 .9 degrees C and at the interior nodes the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius we will follow a similar procedure to obtain the temperatures for the second time step. The next time step finite difference equations are given here. We will then substitute the values of D and the previous temperatures into the above equations. We can solve for the temperature values at the various nodes as shown here the temperature distribution is represented here for the second time step so likewise we can find the temperatures at these various nodes for the next time step by choosing n equals 2 and so on the interior nodes as well as at the boundary nodes. Graphical results are presented using MATLAB for this case. So using MATLAB or other suitable software, we can develop course for a general case where the number of grid spacings and time steps can be altered as desired. And we can obtain the solutions accordingly. Now let's look at the MATLAB code. Here, all the parameters are given here. The total time is given as one second and the number of time steps is 10. So delta t equals t over nt is equal to 0 0.1 second. And likewise, the length along this direction is given as 0 0.1 meter and the number of grid spacings nx equals 5 so this space step delta x equals x length or nx is equal to 0 0.02 and the fluxes at the boundaries are given as f a equals minus 38600 watts per meter square and f b equals 38,600 watts per meter square. In this case, 
the heat is going out of the copper bar at either ends. We'll try to solve this equation. So the at T, the first step is basically the initial step. The initial temperature distribution is given here. And for the first step, the temperature distribution we obtained from MATLAB is given here. And that should match the temperature distribution we obtained through our calculations. This one, this one here. For the second time step, the temperature distribution is given here. That should match the values we calculated here. So we can run this and look at the graphics. On the left hand side, we have the left hand side top portion, we have the initial uh, conditions and the left, at the left hand side the bottom portion shows the final conditions and the right hand side we just saw the animation we will now change the time steps and the grid spacings let's change total time to 10 seconds and the number of time steps to say 100 and likewise we can change the grid spacings along the x direction from 5 to 20 the, sp the grid spacings along the y direction is just given for graphical purposes to save this and run this program again So now we can see the animation, the temperature variations with time on the copper bar. Since we have set the total time to 10 seconds, this program is going to run till we hit 10 seconds. Now we can go back to our PowerPoint. To summarize, we presented a 1D transient heat conduction problem with constant heat flux boundary conditions, also known as Newman boundary conditions. We discretized our domain and solved the problem using FTCS finding difference method. We varied the grid spacings and time steps and presented the results graphically using MATLAB. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. Thanks.